Hi everyone, it's 12.59. I'm starting a little early, but we have kind of an eager animal here who's ready to say hi and for you all to get to know him. Welcome to Denver Zoo, Zoo to you virtual safari. I am Carly, happy Wednesday. We are between our old felines one and two buildings today, so we can talk about Lionel the Cavey. So I'm gonna flip this around and let you see him come on out. And this is Keeper Kristen. She'll be answering your questions yeah, about you? Lionel. So this is our pride and joy of the animal ambassador team, Lionel the Patagonian KV. He was super excited to come out here. This is one of his favorite places to be. It's kind of off scenes, or it has been for a while. So it's an area some of you might recognize. Um, and it's a little interesting to see <laughs> an animal out in an, a previously public area. So for everyone, including myself, who's curious, what is a KV? Yes. So, um, he does look just look kind of like a mutant animal. He looks like a mix of a lot of different things. Um, he looks like a rabbit. He has long legs like a kangaroo. Um, he has big eyes like a deer, but he's actually a rodent. So, uh, he's one of the largest rodents in the world, and he is related to one of the largest rodents, or the largest, our capybaras. So, if you guys have ever been to Tropical Discovery, can you sit down, and you've seen Rodrigo, he's a capybara, and they're actually in that same family along with guinea pigs. So if anyone at home has guinea pigs as pets, um, they are in that same big family, but he is a wild animal, unlike our now domesticated guinea pigs. Where can you find a KV in the wild? So they're called Patagonian KVs, um, and that's an area in South America uh, in Argentina. So he would live in places that would have a lot of shrubland, um, a lot of bushes and things to eat down there, not up in the mountains. Uh, it looks like he's about ready to take a dust bath, which is probably the cutest thing you'd ever seen. Oh. <laughs> so this is Lionel in full comfort mode. He loves the concrete um, and he loves the dust that's on the concrete and he'll roll around to his heart's content and then be ready for more. Can you do a spin? There you go. Oh, good spin. So he knows some of these different things because he's an animal ambassador. He comes out and he needs to meet people up close. So if you saw our wildlife show before construction started, he was one of our stars. Um, we've had him almost his entire life. He is five years old and we've had him since he was just weaned. And it's actually taken all that time to get him used to people because he is a prey animal so things loud sounds a lot of big movements still scare him um, but we just work with him we reward him um, in new situations so that he is really brave Lala is nine and she wants to know can Lionel hop good question Lala so Lionel can hop um, when he's really excited <laughs> and um, having a good time he does what's called pronking, which a lot of people I'm sure have heard that in antelope and deer. And it's where he kind of jumps and he runs with all four feet jumping at the same time. Um, and like you just saw, he could have hopped onto that, but he doesn't like to jump onto things a lot. At least not in front of us. Sometimes we'll find him high up um, when we come into his exhibit, but he doesn't really like to jump over things when we're asking him to do it. He would rather do it on his own time. So cute. Fernanda's eight. She's wondering if he has a tail. And he kind of does. It's kind of yeah. hard to see with him sitting, it's but we'll try to get a picture yeah, of it. Yeah, in a second, get you a good turnaround of him. They have a really weird tail. Um, it's not fluffy and it's really short. So kinda it's just little. that little nubbin back there. And it <laughs> doesn't have hair on it. Um, it's just a funny little guy. It doesn't really do much for him. It doesn't help him with much. There's his little tail. Um, Abby's wondering what their lifespan is. Good question. So he's a rodent and rodents tend to not live a very, very long time. So he'll probably live into his tens um, and maybe um, like teens. Early teens. And how yeah. old is Lionel right now? He is five years old. He is five. So we're going to have a lot of fun with him over the next several years. Uh, keep those questions coming. A lot of people are just saying he's very cute. I know. That's why I really wanted to show him off to everyone. Since he lives um, not on an exhibit for you to see. Actually, he's going to be going on to exhibit for if anyone visits us. Um, so you will be able to see him. But in the past, 
no one has really been able to see him unless you saw our wildlife show or you came and did a bunk with us and stayed the night. What are we feeding him? What treats is he getting? So right now, it's actually a pretty funny thing. He's getting these little biscuits that we break apart. Um, he is an herbivore, so he eats all different types of vegetation. Um, but these biscuits are his treats, and they're actually a primate biscuit from, for our primates. Um, but they are an all herbivore, and I think they are cinnamon flavored, <laughs> which he really enjoys. Does seem like he does. Chizzy has a great question. He wants to know why are males bigger than females? Good question. So they tend to be. Um, Lionel's actually a little smaller than other males. <laughs> Come and say hi. He says hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they tend to be a little bit bigger than females. Um, he, they do some really cool stuff. They are monogamous, so a male and female will stick together um, generally throughout their life and they'll have their babies in underground dens. And they might kind of make little villages called warrens where a bunch of monogamous pairs kind of hang out in the same area to protect each other. And the males do a lot of that and they can all just kind of help each other look out for predators. Very cool. Will Lionel get a mate? So Lionel is not set to have a mate. Um, it kind of turns out that we are his companions. Um, where his, his little war and his family. And it works out well for us because it means he's really curious. He loves people. He wants to hang out with us. Um, and it works out well because in the wild, males tend to follow around females. And Bailey can show off how he loves to follow us. And that's how we train him a lot. There he goes. Uh, there he goes. He's starting to keep he gets up. He's really excited in big open spaces like we would have out in the wild. And you'll see when he gets really, really excited, he kind of jumps up a little. He might wiggle his head around. Um, and that means he's a very happy KV. <laughs> are they particularly fast? They are very fast when they want to be. Um, so they can run over 25 miles an hour. <laughs> there he goes. He might show off a little bit of it, but if he runs, that means Bailey usually has to run. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. You can see some just pure joy in him right now. Um, so yeah, they can run really fast. Those long legs can really get them going. And they live in big open spaces, so that's one of their best ways for them to avoid predators. Get some exercise. I know we've yeah. tried some other spaces out for him around the zoo while we've been closed, yeah. and he's just a little bit too fast for some of the areas. He, he's gotten so brave that... Um, if we were just to take him, and we have, just to take him out, he wants to just explore everything and isn't really interested in um, coming back into his prey all the time. Luckily, he knows us, so <laughs> when we have had a little just exploring day, he's come right back, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to get him up there. Oh, yeah. This bed's all <laughs> Hi, Jessica. No, um, Lionel is not new to the zoo. He's an ambassador animal. So you're really only going to see him if you've come to our wildlife demonstrations um, or been to a, a program like Bunk, Bunk with the Beasts or something like that. So we hope once we reopen, he will be on an exhibit for people to see. But he's really more of an ambassador animal who kind of helps us let people get close to animals and learn a lot about them from their awesome ambassador keepers. Uh, Kelly says, yep, now that you mentioned, he does look like a mini capybara. Yeah. Abby says, how much does he weigh? So he weighs about, how much does he weigh? Probably 14 pounds? Yes. Elise is wondering if he was born at Denver Zoo. He wasn't. So he was born at Staten Island Zoo. And then he came to us after he was um, weaned from mom. So we got him as a baby. He was still very small, but he was ready to be kind of out on his own. <laughs> uh, and so then that kind of helped us getting him pretty young, uh, get him accustomed to a lot of different things. Oh, how little was he when he got here? Oh, that's a good question. He was probably no more than uh, about five pounds. Oh. Lionel, do you want to show off your rodent teeth? So if you want to get up close, you can kind of oh. see he has really long teeth. <laughs> kind of has beaver, yeah, beaver type exactly. teeth. They're all in that rodent family. So <laughs> that's like one of the really good ways to be able to tell that it's in the rodent family. So this would be a good time to remind everyone, rodents aren't bad. No, they're not. <laughs> they get they, a bad rap. They do, and they're adorable. And they're hey, really bud. helpful to their ecosystems. Not your mate. 
<laughs> yeah, Lionel and I have a real good relationship. We spend a lot of time together, which means he gets more and more comfortable when he knows all of his best friends are around. He knows it's not going to be too scary. Is he about us. full grown? He is full grown. So that's as big as he'll get. Yeah. He's venturing over to the sun. Okay. And exploring. We're just, we're on his time now. We're just following him. Yep. <laughs> his favorite thing right now is laying in the sun. So okay. Yep. Found a good spot. It's a beautiful day to just bask in the sun. So if that's what Lionel wants to do, that's what he's going to do. Hi, Chrissy. Um, Kristen says he was about five pounds when he was born. So very, very small. Um, his legs seem pretty skinny. Yeah. <laughs> is there a reason for that? Is there an adaptation? So yeah, it looks like he's walking on stilts. <laughs> and so if you get up close to his front feet, you can see they're pretty funnily shaped. Um, there are like all these little shovels basically, and they help him dig really well. And then his back feet are also, there are only three toes in the back. Um, they help him dig and really push off and run pretty fast. Hi, Rick. You are looking at Lionel, our Patagonian cavey. And he is a member of the rodent family and the closest relation, if you know what the capybara is, in our tropical discovery habitat. That's who Lionel is kind of related to. Um, where in the zoo is his habitat? So he lives with our ambassador animals right now in our decommissioned felines building. So he's got a lot of space back here. Um, so he doesn't have a public facing habitat just quite yet. It's funny to see the combinations that people are saying Lionel looks like. I've seen rabbit, deer, yeah. dog, kangaroo, rabbit. Yeah, that, that's what we usually hear is rabbit, deer, kangaroo, um, which are all just really good really good guesses because they have those big features like that um, but you think about it it's they're all for a very specific reason so he lives out in big open areas he needs those really big eyes to get a wide range of view his massive ears to help him hear too Chrissy wants to know does he like the water he's not a big fan of water um, they live in really dry areas so I'm sure it's not something that they would run across a lot in the wild um, so he's not a big fan. He'd rather come inside if it were raining. Um, and he doesn't love to swim or get in pools. <laughs> so not, not a water. So we're giving them the primate biscuit right now. What else does he like to eat? He gets um, what we call wild herbivore. Since he's a wild animal, he has a pretty specific diet. Um, so wild herbivore is all the good grains and vegetation put into these nice biscuits. And then he also gets different kinds of vegetables. Uh, hi, Karen. You would find Lionel in Argentina, hence the Patagonian part of his name. I know. <laughs> Abby, he is not a marsupial. He certainly does look similar to one, <laughs> but he is a rodent. Um, let's see. There was a really good question here. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> he loves all this space to explore. So in the wild, um, these guys are near threatened. They are dealing with a lot of habitat loss, like a lot of our animals. Um, agriculture is kind of taking over and grazing by sheep and introduced European hares. They're kind of eating all the food that our cavies would eat. So um, that's something that they're kind of dealing with. Their populations are declining and kind of fragmenting. So that's why it's nice to make sure that we have healthy populations. Absolutely. I think you read Abby's mind. She had oh, just nice. asked, what is their conservation status? Yeah, so <laughs> great question and great answer, Please, Kristen. On the same wavelength. Yes, Abby is always on the same wavelength. <laughs> She's always got great questions. <laughs> Does he ever interact with any of our other ambassadors back here? Um, he doesn't really meet many others. Since he's a prey animal, he's pretty nervous, especially meeting others. Um, yeah, we have our serval nearby. And our jaguar also um, can see him sometimes. <laughs> Luckily, Lionel doesn't see them, but they really enjoy seeing him. Um, so we, we leave him to just hang out with us mostly. <laughs> so he's a prey animal. Who are um, their predators? Predators, good question, are gonna be um, animals like our, the, oh gosh, why am I struggling? Um, like <laughs> cats, um, I think foxes in South America, definitely go after these guys. I'm trying to think of the species name. If I remember it, I'll tell you um, a certain canine. I think it's like coyotes, but they're, whatever they're coyotes. 
<laughs> Carnivorous animals yep. would definitely yep. enjoy. Big predators. Could the, large lions. birds of prey get small cavies? Yes. Yeah, definitely. So they have to watch out for, for raptors, <laughs> eagles, hawks, that kind of thing. Because they are very prone when they're little. So that's why the big groups help. And then they make dens. Um, so their babies are a little bit more protected. <laughs> Kate, run around with Bailey again. Caitlin says, why does he sort of look like a kangaroo and a capybara? Because he actually is closely related to the capybara. He's just smaller. So, but no, no marsupial links there. <laughs> Abby is an eagle-eyed, eagle-eyed listener. She goes, I didn't know you had a serval. Yeah. So he's also an ambassador um, who generally has been behind the scenes, but will also be in, in an exhibit here soon when the zoo, zoo reopens. Um, let's see. Is Lionel the first KV we've had at Denver Zoo? I'm pretty sure he is. Um, he was a new one to all of our ambassador team. Um, no one had worked with them before, so we had to do a lot of research <laughs> and finding out um, just kind of all of their natural history and requirements to take care of them. Um, we definitely have to give him big spaces. He loves to dig. He's quite a mess. How many can um, a mom give birth to at one time? Oh, good question. I don't think it's very, very many. I remember that they usually in the wild only have a litter once a year. Um, so they don't reproduce super quickly, um, even if they do have a bigger group of them. I think it's usually um, under 10. Under 10, but yeah. not just typically singletons, not like a lot of- I don't think so. Very... But that's one of the hmm. questions that I can't remember off the top of my head right now. Well, I just have to give a lot of credit to our ambassador keepers who do these <laughs> lives. They work with reptiles, uh, mammals, <laughs> birds. So they are have an encyclopedic knowledge of a lot of animals. So <laughs> yeah. we forgive them if they can't be the uh, king of just one species. They're right. a jack of all <laughs> trades. And that's the hard part is remembering all of their birthdays. Because we do like to celebrate birthdays. Um, but we always have to kind of make sure we're looking them up and preparing ourselves, have a big schedule so that they get extra fun treats and things like that. Very true. Chrissy's wondering if you know how many are left in the in the wild. We know their numbers are decreasing. Do we know yes. how many there are? I don't remember the actual population number, um, but yeah, definitely decreasing right now. And they're fragmenting, so they're not as connected. There are different groups of populations that can't find each other anymore. <laughs> I think Lala might have just watched Bambi because she's wondering if he thumps when he's scared. Good question. So he makes it actually a few sounds um, that kind of tell us how he's feeling. So a lot of times he grunts when he is frustrated. He'll grind his teeth when he's excited and anticipatory. Um, he doesn't really thump his back legs a lot. Usually he'll just kind of run as fast as he can and make circles if he's <laughs> angry or nervous. But we don't see that very often. Very cool. Is he soft? Everyone's curious. Yes, yes. so they are very soft. Um, it's kind of one of their downfalls is that they have really nice hair um, and people in the past have hunted them for their fur. The thing about Lionel is... <laughs> <laughs> he heard that. He got... <laughs> He doesn't love to be pet, um, so we don't get to just pet him very often. And it makes sense because he's a wild animal, so it's not something he just automatically loves. Oh, he's gonna do the bath. Yep, when yeah. he's doing that sit down and it's like for a he's dusty spot. Yeah, he's preparing for a bath. Sometimes he'll keep going, and other days he'll just keep walking around and finding a better place. This would be a good dusty spot right over here. For some privacy first. <laughs> Oh, Christy's wondering how big his teeth can be. Good question. So where they're at right now, they're probably about an inch long. Um, they can keep growing. So rodents' teeth never stop growing. So we have to make sure to give him different kinds of things that will wear down his teeth. Because if we didn't, we'd have to have veterinarians come in and give him a little trim. So well, they're, they're relatively long for his body and his face. He's got a pretty small little mouth. Um, and his teeth are relatively long, probably about an inch long. What kind of enrichment items do we give him? So with rodents, it can be a little difficult because as many people have seen with hamsters or even mice that they find around their homes, um, they can chew into a lot of different stuff. So we have to be careful what we give him. 
so that it's, it's safe for him. So a lot of boxes. He loves to be able to hide in boxes. He can put his food in little ones, um, little containers like that, giving him different kinds of brows, um, different kinds of branches and things like that for him to explore because they do a lot of exploring with their mouths. Does he ever build nests or anything like that? Not nests. He loves to build holes. So <laughs> he loves to build really deep holes. I think they're nice and cool down low. So that's fun for him. Um, just digging is one of his, his favorite pastimes. <laughs> What's his, bi his best sense? He's got the big ears, the big eyes, the big nostrils. That's a very good question. They're all really good being a prey animal lives in big open spaces. Um, I'd probably say his, his sight or his hearing, but mm -hmm. his scent is also very good. So <laughs> you could pick any one of them and they're gonna be amazing and a lot better than ours. <laughs> um, Abby's wondering if he's diurnal or nocturnal. A lot of rodents are nocturnal. Yeah, so he is, I think he's crepuscular, um, where they spend a little bit more time um, mm -hmm. Oh, he's getting into the garden beds, <laughs> wanting to. Um, so that means they're um, awake more at dawn and dusk, because if you think about it, in big open spaces that get pretty hot, um, you want to be able to be out when it's a little cooler. What was and that word? Crepuscular. Crepuscular. We got to add a new one to our vocabulary, everyone. We know <laughs> nocturnal, diurnal, browser, grazer. Now we can add crepuscular. Mm -hmm. uh, hi. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Tammy. You are looking at Lionel the <laughs> Patagonian KV. He is brilliant. He could not navigate these high things, so he just found an easier entrance into the mulch bed. <laughs> so, <laughs> top of his, his mountain. Way to go, Lionel. Um, if you saw in the beginning my mask, that is actually a Denver Zoo mask. You can order one of those on our uh, online gift shop. If you just go to shop.denverzoo.org, you can pick up your own. It is very comfortable. I can tell you I've been wearing it for a while and it feels great. So you can get your own little Denver Zoo one. I've got one that has some silhouettes of animals on the Colorado flag, but we have fun animal face masks too. So if you want to kind of get wild with your mask, you can get one on shop.denverzoo. Dot org. So I will take our kind of last round of questions, last call. So put them in the comments if you have any for Kristen about Lionel the KV. So let's see, there were a couple I feel like that were in here. Uh, Teresa says she misses the Denver Zoo. Oh, Teresa, we miss you too. We cannot wait to reopen. We're still working really hard on those plans to make sure we can do it safely for everyone involved. So thank you everyone for your patience on that. All right, waiting for those last couple questions while we just follow Lionel around right now. He's so handsome. Oh, he's making me dizzy. <laughs> I think he thinks he's going out for a little, yes, he, little walk right now. He loves to go out everywhere. He is an adventurer. <laughs> he really is. Oh my gosh. So, oh, hi, Lori. We don't really know their wild lifespan, but rodents typically tend to have shorter lifespans. Um, and so in human care, he'll live to be probably around 10 to those early teen years. Hi, Jan. I'm so glad you were able to learn about an entirely new species today. I'm so glad we were able to bring that for you. That's one of my favorite things about cavies is that most people have never heard or seen them before. Um, and they're, everyone loves them. You can't not love it once you meet them. And now you're leaving with just extra knowledge. Yeah. Oh, and Kristen was on our last live when we talked about appropriate pets. And someone has asked, can people keep cavies as pets? So they are relatively common, um, but highly not recommended. <laughs> they need big open spaces. In the wild, they would be living in big open bushlands and, and ranges. Um, think about how fast they can run over 25 miles an hour they want to be able to do that kind of thing they want to dig they're really messy they can't be potty trained and they have a specific diet so some people try to but it is not recommended at all that's why we care for them at the zoo because yeah. we have all the ability to provide the best care for wild animals Lionel is an awesome ambassador would not be an awesome house pet no. hi Ashley um he can he can jump but probably not too high right no not super super high uh, and he personally doesn't love to jump 
doesn't doesn't love to jump. He likes to kind of climb and then sort of yeah. lift himself onto higher surfaces. Yeah, and then just sprint around and explore. Very cool. All right. Thank you, everyone, for these awesome questions. I hope you fell in love with Lionel today, learned something new, probably about a new species you didn't even know we had here at Denver Zoo. So we're so happy to be able to bring Lionel to you. Thank you so much to Kristen for answering your awesome questions. I never would have been able to. And to Bailey for keeping Lionel entertained and fed and busy throughout the live. So thank you all. Um, we will see you tomorrow for another Zoo to You virtual safari. Bye everyone.